Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. I greet you with the universal greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. We seek refuge with Allah, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, from Satan, the rejected enemy. And we we say all the praises due to God. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi alafa bil islami bayna kulubi mu'mineen. Wa awjaba ittahada wa harama tafarraka fi kitabihi mubin. That is to say, all the praise belongs to God, Allah, who has joined the hearts of those who believe together with the religion or the way of life titled Islam or called Al Islam. And he has declared it forbidden for us as people, intelligent people, to become separated from the clear truth. Uh, I witness that there's nothing deserving of worship except God alone. He has no partners, he has no helpers, he has no associates, he has no children, he has no lineage. God is independent and alone by himself. Um, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of God, or Muhammad is the conclusion to all the prophets and messengers that preceded him. And he is the conclusion of, of the prophet, prophet, uh, prophetic movement. So dearly beloved people, praise be to God. Again, peace be upon you. Welcome to our Sunday public address at Master New Africa Center for Human Development located in Hitchcock, Texas, 7610 Highway 3. Um, we thank you for your support, your continued support. And we pray that there's some benefit that you find in our Sunday public address today. And we are addressing the invitation to be human, the invitation to be human. Um, First and foremost, just to give you some background information about um, our public address or what the purpose of our public address is, you know, we, we feel a need to connect with the community at all costs. And this need for us to connect with the community um, is primarily um, to encourage the, our people, to encourage the people of our community to become attracted to thinking to become attracted to thinking and when i say thinking I mean thinking on a level on a level that frees us up as independent individuals you know um you know I'll, I'll often look back on my life and i you know when we look back and we think about accomplishments that we've made or progress that we made in our life of course there's always people that have been there some people have been there along with us along the way supporting us you know trying to help us to maneuver into a better position for our life but in the midst of all those people that you're thinking you got to remember to think yourself you got you have to remember to thank thank yourself thank yourself um because it's yourself that had to put in the work um to maneuver you uh, put you in a position um to become who you are and where you are in your life but know that you yourself couldn't have done it alone First and foremost, you couldn't have done it without God's support and without God's mercy. And God's mercy and his support extends to those people who are strategically placed in your life, right? To help you achieve a certain, uh, to, to help you become who you are and where you are right now. So I will say this as I begin, and I want you to listen to me very closely, brothers and sisters, that everything, everything that has happened in your life up to this very moment in time is on purpose everything that has happened in your life up to this moment in time is on purpose my advice to you is to keep going and p.s it'll make sense to you later on down the line It'll make sense to you later on down the line. Um, so with that being said, I want to talk about uh, address the invitation to be human. And people are like, what is, what is this? What is this? What you mean invitation to be human? I'm already human. You know, it's a lot of things that we have to begin to question. 
question for good reason now. Uh, because to me, the world is, is is a big old question mark as we speak. It's almost what it's almost like the debate that you when you walk out of your house or turn on your TV is like, what's for real and what's not? You know, what's real and what's fake? What's what it what does it mean to be rational? What does it mean to be irrational? What does it mean to be moral? I mean, the world is just a big question mark right now. And you can become confused, you can even become a qualified candidate to be a seriously ill mental patient, just looking at the world because of all the confusion and the, and, and, and the, the uncertainty that's operating in the world today. An invitation to be human. This is what I'm inviting you to do. And, and this invitation to be human, I said that I could say uh, I'm inviting you to be a Muslim. You know, I could do that, but that's not my, that's not, that's not the purpose of this the discussion that I'm having today. You know, because of all of that language and all this, these things that are being given to you, first and foremost, we have to debrief from a lot of this language that's been given to us because your, 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 your subconscious mind, when you hear certain words, you've been conditioned, you've been programmed um, to perceive, the, to have a certain perception of certain language. So I got to be very strategic about the language that I use and the language that I do use, I'm going to try my best to define it in the context in which I'm speaking of today. Because... I want to see, I want to see not only my people, and I'll say my people, I mean African American people evolve and become more serious about the life that they have. I want to see all people because you know what's affecting us in the world today is a call to action that's ob obligatory upon all people. So inshallah, God willing, I'm gonna try to keep my try to keep this uh lecture for the most part universal in its context because i want everybody to to be able to understand where i'm coming from and apply it to the context in your life that that is most befitting so but what i will do is i i, I want to i want to first i also want to say this you know coming from you know i'm growing up christian most of my life growing up christian and in the church most of my life um i never divorced the values that my parents taught me um, that Christianity taught. So, you know, I have lots of respect, ton of respect, you know, um, for my Christian family. And and because they are part of my, not only my family, my blood family, but my community, a lot of respect. And what I'm hoping that we can do in the future is um, the attention um, that I'm trying to bring to this interfaith um, the importance of this interfaith dialogue is that some of these pastors and preachers or rabbis or whoever they are, they consider themselves to be religious leaders, that, you know, the work that we have to do as leaders is in the community. It's out in the, it's out in the community. It's boots on the ground. It's like grass, uh, feet, uh, grass on the feet. It's not in these buildings, you know, that are nice and comfortable, AC and plush seating and all that stuff, you know. You know, if and because I've never divorced my relationship with the community or the hood, I've never, I've never divorced my relationship with the hood or the community. And I'm thankful that I didn't leave behind the wounds that produced me. Wounds, W O M B S, wounds that produced me. You know, even prison is a wound that produced me. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to the mercy of God for the experiences that I've had in my life. And I'll repeat it and I'll say it again. You know, this is I'm not going to say God talked to me. I don't even like to use that kind of language. But God made me become aware of something. That everything in your life, Tyree, that has happened up to this point is on purpose. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. I will make it make sense to you later. I promise. Sign God. So I just want to share that with y'all before we get started. So listen. In the Quran, which is the holy book of the Muslims, in the Quran. In the Quran. Somebody trying to call me on my life. Okay. So in the Quran, God talks about building a community. 
I mean, the, the Quran does not talk about, you know, we talk about building community, but in the Quran and even in the Bible, there's no uh, uh, um, there's the invitation for people to come to their better self. And the Quran and the Bible, both, both of them, they both speak about this ability for the human being to build a community, but it doesn't give us the blueprint on how to do it. The Bible nor the Quran, even though both of them talk about building healthy community life, neither one of them gives us a blueprint on how to do it. You know, but it does give us a blueprint on how to build the human, the, the, the individual human being. And this is the this is the thing that is most important that I think as we miss this thing, we know we live in a world that is dominated with influences. And these influences are so powerful. They are they are so they are so attractive that we subscribe to them without even realizing because it, it comes so rapidly. It's, it comes so so um, so so instantly, and it's readily available. You know, you don't have to be looking for something to be to be to ascribe to a certain lifestyle, a certain um, uh, mindset, or whatever. But what this does, it is it affects the natural ability in us as human beings. Um, to recognize the value of our humanness, the value of our, the invaluability of what it means to be a human being. And the focus that I want to direct my lecture today as motivation, because I, I want you to be motivated. I, I want you to, you know, when you try to stimulate people to discover the best of who they are, it's not about trying to make people do what you say, or even trying to make you um, conform to a, a way of my choice. I, I learned a while back that if you can just expand the, you know how they say, think outside the box. Most of us have used that terminology before. That's because both subliminally and consciously, we realize that there is something that controls the way we think. There is vices set up to control the way we think. Well, let me let me let me let me let you in on a little secret. Did you know that all of your thinking is predicated upon language? All of your thinking is predicated upon words, meaning that every thought that you have, it cannot exist without words. If you if you Think my theory is thrown off or I'm, I'm tripping or I'm coming from a, a far off direction. Try to think of something without using a word right now. Go. Give me a few seconds. Try to think of something without using words. Exactly my point. You can't do it. You cannot do it. Therefore, the language or the words that we internalize, right, that we expose to, that we subscribe to, that we um, that we choose to use as an expression, not just coming out of our mouth, but that influences our expression and behavior. Just imagine if those words were the box that somebody else created and they put language in the box that you can't help but to be exposed to. So what happens at that point is you become contaminated, right? If I create a box and I put in that box a language that you start to use to express the way you think, and in turn, your thinking expresses the way you behave, right? The result of that is going to be in the action of the behavior. So now I've presented it in that format in that way so you can now become more deliberate in determining how are you entertaining language and words that come into your environment. How are you entertaining these things? How are you able to decide what's healthy and what's not? Or are you even able to do so? You know, see, this world we're living in is, is, is in this point in time, is created at such a fast pace. There's nothing, um, our patience is leaving us as human beings. We don't want to wait on nothing. We don't want to wait on nothing, you know. 
we want it right now if it's available i need it right now i need it like you know and there's things in our life that has enhanced our our appetite for wanting things instantaneously instantaneously without working without working you know when i came to the conclusion that everything in my life that has happened up to this point was on purpose I realized something that the biggest part of my life up to this point and recognizing and appreciating where it is right now is is predicated upon the fact that I had to be patient regardless of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. It always happened when on God's time, when God allowed it to happen. You know, even though we may become complacent and think that we do things or we set a time or we set you know a, 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 a time frame for things to be done it all happens upon god's time but this work that has to take place in between time you know while you while you're trying to get from point a to point b you know it's work that go on in between that and the the bigger the bigger the 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 greater load the greater burden of the work has to be performed by you you know, we all have mentors, we have motivators, we have people who have inspired us, et cetera, et cetera. All that's great. But you got to carry most of the workload because you got to do the work. So getting back to this language environment, getting back, our leader, Imam Wadithuddin Muhammad, Imam W.D. Muhammad, peace be upon him. May God, you know, forgive him his trespasses and bless him with the highest uh, station in the paradise. I'm surprised that Imam Muhammad is not known to most Americans, particularly African Americans, who was the first, um, or who was the son of the, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who led us into Islam proper, as he called it at that time. But one of the foremost uh, African American scholars of Islam from America, born and raised in America. I remember him saying once, we live in an oppressive word environment, oppressive word environment meaning that the language that we internalize or that we take into our our um, consciousness that we use to think with is oppressed before we even before we get before we even you know internalize it's oppressive so in turn we internalize this oppressive language in our intellect and therefore the result of that when we entertain it we promote behavior that's oppressive. You know, when you sit back and analyze any or everything that you've ever done wrong or that you've ever done that with that you know was morally incorrect or not sound, it's painful when you sit back and have to review certain behaviors and actions that you yourself, you know, it's painful, but it's okay. It's all right. You, if you can't face yourself and face the mistakes that yourself have made. This is why it's so important for us, you know, to forgive ourselves, but also to thank ourselves in, 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 in addition, you know, forgive yourself, but also don't forget to thank yourself, commend yourself, pat yourself, don't look for it from other people, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, the best support system that you could ever have is the one that you give yourself. The best support that you will ever find is the one that you give yourself. And I say that um, with all sincerity. Now, don't think that you don't need support outside of yourself. You do. But the best support and really the best advantage that you will ever have in life is the one that you, the one that you, that you acknowledge in your own self. So let me talk about this invitation to be human. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet, what language, what culture, what religious affiliation you have, or where you're at currently in your life. Life is not going to present itself to you without a struggle. And you may say, invitation to be human. Oh, I'm already human. Are, are you really? How do you know that? How can you actually prove that you're the human being that God designed and fashioned, gave purpose to, and are you fulfilling that? 
that is a question that you have to ask yourself and only you can answer it you know only you can really begin to research and explore it and see how am i measuring up to the human being that god creates you know in the quran god says in the quran to us Now that translates, and most certainly, he created the human being in the most excellent, upright mode or excellent, upright condition. This is God saying this about what he created. No human being can take credit for saying, I created that human being. SubhanAllah. All of us were created on a pattern that God designed. Your mother and your father was just instrumental in following the design that God made to get you here. I hope that makes sense to you. Because not even your mother and your father created you. They didn't create themselves. So all of us were created on a pattern that Allah, God, when I say Allah, I'm talking about God. Well, who is God? Who is Allah? I hear some people say, well, they worship Allah. We worship God. No, let me say, let me, let me make it very plain and clear. Allah is the Arabic term for the God. Now, if you say God and I say the God, then obviously the God that I'm, the, the, the God takes precedence over God, whatever you refer to. When we say the God, we're referring to the God who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. And then gave it its nature, assigned it its purpose and responsibility, raised it up from an infant into a mature uh, creation, and then guided it. Do I need to repeat that? When we speak of God, we're speaking of the one who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. Everything from the rock to a piece of lint in your pocket to the ant, to the blade of grass, to the wasp, to the bee, to the bird, to the bear, to the giraffe, to the human being, right? He created all that in between, gave it its nature. That's why it performs the way it does in creation. He raised it up from an infant state till it became mature in its creation. Then he guided it. So when we talk about God, this is what we're talking about. When we say Allah, this is what we're talking about. So when Allah created the human being, he says, Surely we created the human being in the most excellent upright condition. Now, this is God telling you that. What motivational speech do you need more than what God is saying he created you to be? See, we have become addicted in, in, on, on motivational speeches from other people and think that they're the motivator. You should be more motivated by what the, your, the creator of everything in creation says about you, about how he designed you and me. Nevertheless, this creation that God will create us in cannot be fulfilled. Your life cannot be fulfilled without you embracing the idea of what it means to be human. And what it means to be human begins with struggle. It begins with work. It begins with, you know, it's some things that you're going to have to be exposed to that perhaps may, it may, um, it may set you back. So you may think in your life, right? But nevertheless, you cannot experience life as a human being without putting in the work, putting in the work. God says in another part of the Quran that man can have nothing that man can have, or woman, man or woman, the human being, right? Actually, the human being. That the human being can have nothing but what he or she strives for. Strives for. You know, to make it clear, to make it to give you a very good example that we all can relate to when you were in your mother's womb 
in the capacity of that small space and you start expanding, right? You start expanding that one. And, the, and, your, and your, your mother went to the doctor and he said, well, coming up on that, you in that last trimester, it's nine months, this baby got to come out. Why? Because you have become too big for that environment. Even though the environment was perfect for you to develop in, you can't. You became too big for it. And most of us, this is like our ideas. We don't really, we don't, we don't recognize when we become too big for a particular environment. Right? We try to stay there. We try to force ourselves to be in there. But what happens when the baby don't want to come out? Hey, buddy, your time is up, man. Nine months is here. You know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta have, we gotta see you. They go in and get the baby, right? They perform what they have to call a C-section, right? Or induce the labor, right? To create the labor. But in, let's say inducing the labor, right? To get this baby in the position to come. The woman has to dilate in, mo in, 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 in most cases to 10 centimeters, meaning a birth canal has to open up 10 centimeters in order for this baby to come out. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the baby is 10 centimeters. It's just that that's what the, you know, in order for this baby to, to be born, this birth canal has to open up. Now, just think about this for a second. When that baby positions itself to come down the birth canal of his mother, is that not a painful process? It's a painful process indeed, especially when the baby gets here and, it, and the the uh, the centimeters of the baby's head is 15 inch, 15 centimeters, 20, 22 centimeters, right? But nevertheless, it's coming down that birth canal. But that's a struggle for the baby to come, to pass, just to get to the new phase, the new, the new um, 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 phase of life. It has to come through this process and it has to struggle. It has to struggle in the midst of getting there. No struggle, no progress. So when a baby is born, coming through the birth canal, it's a painful process, but Allah, God, is so merciful, he causes you and I to forget it. Can none of us remember passing through the birth canals of our mother? The mercy of God is so <laughs> immeasurable, he causes us to forget it immediately. So when the baby is birthed, right, and it comes out into this new world, right, and, the, and the, the first sign of its own independence is the, the, the doctor said, I got to separate this baby from the mother. And what does he do? He cut the umbilical cord, tie it up. Now, you, now you're no longer dependent on your mother to breathe for you, to feed you, anything. You are acting as an independent servant of God. But that's the beginning. That's just the beginning of the story. Your struggle continues. Your struggle continues. You know, when the baby is birthed and they cut the birth uh, cut the umbilical cord and they tie it up and they put the little uh, uh, clothes pin on it. You know, one of the things that happens prior to that, you know, sometimes we see in some where they, they smack the doctor smacks the baby and the baby starts crying. And I used to think that the baby starts crying because, you know, maybe, you know, uh, uh, the baby was smacked. And this is as a as a young young boy, I used to think that that. But what I come to realize is that as a baby in the womb of your mother, for nine months you've been breathing in fluid, amniotic fluid. When you pass down the birth canal of your mother and you come out into this world, there's no fluid in this world. You have to breathe oxygen. And this is a foreign entity coming into your body at this point. So naturally, the first breath of a baby is a struggle. Brothers and sisters, our life cannot evolve without struggle. This is my point. That man or woman or the human being, period, can have nothing except for what he or she strives to have. And I'm and I'm. My invitation to you is to strive to be human at all costs. Strive to be human. Reacquaint yourself with those basic, natural, organic needs of the human being. Don't become distracted or don't become 
you know, influenced by these things that divorce us from our humanity. Because my approach to building a, we need to build a model community. I love that concept. I love it. I do. But what most builders of a model community fail to realize is they haven't built the people, the person yet that makes the community. The person or the people have to be built. And this is what Muhammad the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. This is what we learned from him. He didn't go out and build mosques or, you know, he didn't go out and do none of that. He built people. And it is our obligation to help encourage the positive motivation and inspiration of building people. People need to be built up. People need to be built up. Because their humanity, the essence of the very essence of what it means to be human has been stripped away from them. And they've been fooled and tricked into thinking that they got to be something else. And then they call all it, they call this, you know, they have, they adopted this culture. Not ever knowing who they really, who they're truly, who they truly were created to be. And how invaluable their human essence is. It's priceless. So that's a reminder that I want to leave with you all for today for our public address is, yeah, please, if you have any comments or please enter them into our chat. We'd be, you know, we, 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 we do our best to try to answer any questions that you may have um, in our chat. Um, because our, our goal is always to, to motivate you, inspire you, you know, to make you feel appreciated about who you are and what God has created you to be, because there's a lot of work to be done. But in order for us to understand the seriousness of the work and to really find out how we should act in the role of fulfilling that obligation, you know, where do I fit in? What part of the work do I, you know, do I embrace? You have to come to terms with what it means to be human, what it means to be human. You know, we appreciate you all for taking the time out to visit us on Sundays from 1230 to one o'clock. This is called our public address at Master New Africa Center for Human Development, located in Hitchcock, Texas, 7610 Highway 6. Um, and we have our Juma prayer, which is every Friday at 1.30 p.m. Um, and for those of you, I want to give a special shout out, special thanks to those of you who had, who was nice enough to congratulate me on my recent accomplishment of graduating uh, from Bayan Islamic Graduate School, Chicago Theological Seminary with a master's degree in Islamic chaplaincy. I really appreciate your support and your prayers. Um, your well wishes. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's just one key. Um, that's just another key that uh, Allah, God bless me to acquire. Um, but there's more, there's more that I need to, to obtain to get into certain doors in order to um, be able to uh, influence this world in a different way. You notice I say influence this world. Um, I'm preparing myself and always as we should to exceed or go on to the next level. And the next level, uh, as my mentor used to tell me all the time, you know, you have to prepare yourself, Tyree, for world leadership. You know, I remember when he used to say that, in, I didn't really take that serious. Or I thought he was just trying to bolster, you know, encourage me to keep going in the direction I was going in. But I can see the reality of it now and why it's so important um, that I pursue this path uh, of becoming a world leader and becoming a person qualified to sit at the table to get into doors where uh, the so-called qualified, learned people of the world are making decisions about the world, inshallah, God willing. So, Thank you again for all your prayers and supporting me. Thank you for supporting Master New Africa. Again, we leave you as we came with the universal, the beautiful universal greeting of peace. We say assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And we uh, look forward to seeing you next Sunday, 12.30 p.m. to 1 p.m. Inshallah, God willing. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Wa alaikum as Imam Tari. Thank you so very much for beautiful Talim. Alhamdulillah. And thank you. I, I will say on behalf of the community near and far, 
uh, Master New Africa, Master Farty Lou Muhammad, Master Thailand, just I don't want to go on because I don't want to leave anybody out, but Alhamdulillah. I'm so, so very proud of you and uh, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar on you obtaining your master's degree in Islamic chaplaincy. We know that the sky is the limit for you and uh, we just pray that Allah continues to, I mean, to bless you. And to I, mean, you. I mean, thank you so much, Sister Latifah. Really, really thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you all for continuing to support you know what what allah has me doing this is the work and um it wouldn't be possible without us working together right you all yes, as well so thank you so much teamwork and i will one yes, takeaway right. what you said was everything that has happened in our life up to this point uh has on purpose on it's purpose, on purpose. On purpose. and i like your advice to kind of put it behind you and keep going you know alhamdulillah alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So. This is Maggie Shabazz, alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. All okay, right. Well, so, Marie, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to facilitate a uh, stop a little earlier so we can, you know, probably get some comments probably 15 minutes before, see if we have any comments. Because I, I don't want to give too much information and, and not allow people to, you know, present a question that they may have. But uh, I'll keep in mind of that ne next time, inshallah. Oh, yes, sir. Inshallah. Fine. Fine. So I'll let you close out for the man. Okay, inshallah. Let's end and do our Rabbana atina fit dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Our Lord, give us good and excellence in this life. Give us good and excellence in the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. Ameen.